Good morning, everybody. It's another new day. Where else are we gonna start our day? So how's everybody doing on this wonderful Friday morning? Actually, you're probably watching this Saturday or something, some other day, but how are you doing? It's Friday, it's gonna be a fantastic day. We're gonna go drive some trucks. Bring people their stuff. Oh, when I'm getting cut off right now. Very nice, very nice. Well, it's time to wake up the beast and go hook up. Oh, I was gonna leave the shop. Somebody's closing the door on me. Uh oh. My lights not on? Why aren't those lights on up there? That's better. And that's why you do your pre-trip. There's a corroded wire. And that's why those, uh, just at the back at the top, the marker lights weren't working. That's a pretty big ticket if I were to get caught with it like that. You know, the thought did cross my mind. I mean, I'm driving during the day. I'm not gonna be using my lights. But if I get pulled in for an inspection or a roadside inspection or, you know, God forbid there's an accident or something and the truck gets inspected and it's found that I had faulty equipment, like marker lights that are burnt out, doesn't matter if it contributed to whatever accident happened or not, they could, they could issue me a big ticket. And who knows what else if there was people hurt, like in the worst case scenario. So it's best to get it fixed right away. And we got a great mechanic there who on the ball right away. Every time I've had an issue with this truck, like I haven't been there long, but every time I've had an issue with this truck, bang, it's been fixed like right away. No waiting around, on the ball. I really like that. So like I said, that's why you want to do your pre-trip and make sure your equipment is working. Cause you know, I, I really don't need my lights. I need my lights now, but after an hour or so, the sun's gonna be up. But I always do have my lights on anyways for safety. Always, whether the sun's up, whether it's nighttime, raining, daytime, snowing, whatever the weather, I always have my lights on. That's so that people can see me better. All right, I, I wanna be as visible as possible to everybody on the road. Even though I'm a big truck, some people, I don't know, light catches their eye better than a big moving object. I don't know how it, I don't know. I always have my lights on. So, it's important to me that all my lights work properly at the beginning of my day. I don't want a ticket and I don't want to be responsible for, uh, you know, getting a fine or something. Or God forbid the worst case scenario, someone has an accident because they didn't see me or my signals weren't working or... Always make sure your lights work, okay? Lesson of the day. So now that we got the truck, all the lights working properly, everything's running great. We're on our way into Winnipeg. I got some stuff to pick up on the west side of Winnipeg. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be huge. We got three skids, I think. And then from there, there'll probably be more. But for now, we're gonna head around to uh, the seasons, uh, around where, south of Tuxedo. What, what area is it, Lindenwoods? South of Tuxedo, south of Ikea, around Road 90, around McGilvery area there. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Everybody from outside the country is like, huh? Canada has roads? We sure do. You know, funny story, okay? Funny story, there's lots of these funny stories, but I'm gonna tell a funny story. And this doesn't apply to everybody. I'm not gonna generalize and say everybody, like, but I was in Florida once, right? Long time ago, and I had just gotten my truck license. Well, not my truck license, I had just gotten my over the road job. So this was like 10, 10 years ago. One of my first trips was to uh, Florida. And I got down there and I was talking to people because I was excited to be down there, right? I was 
excited. I was telling people, yeah, I'm from Canada. Isn't that cool? And I'm in Florida. Look, palm trees. I'm excited. And they were kind of excited. Like, wow, we never met no one from Canada before. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's where we are. And I'm not lying. And I'm not saying this to make anybody look bad, but it was hilarious and it's worth a share. They looked at me. They said, so you're from Canada. And then they looked at my truck. And then they looked at me, and then they looked at my truck. And then they looked at me, and they, with a serious face, they said, Well, how'd you get down here in that? I'm like, what do you, what do you, I, I drove it all the way down. It was like four days. It was great. I'm, but Canada doesn't have any roads. <laughs> uh, I think I actually burst out laughing. I hope I didn't make them feel bad, but I'm like, What? I'm like, yeah, well, well, did you buy it down here and then like take your sled down here and then jump in it here and then drive to here like, did you get in your truck in minnesota and then come down no i i got the truck in canada and drove it from canada to florida their mind was just blown they had this idea honest to god they had this idea, unless if they're very good actors, but this has happened to more than just one person, so. Yes. They thought that Canada had nothing but dog sleds. That we didn't have any roads. That maybe we had snowmobiles and stuff, but they thought that we were just an open, open line with no roads. And you know, they're not completely wrong if you think about it. Because Manitoba especially, we're like the least developed province. And we like it that way. At least I do. It's quiet. Not a lot of people here. So southern Manitoba along the U.S. border is exactly like America. You've seen it in my videos here. Exactly like America. The roads aren't quite as nice maybe in some areas. I don't know. It depends who you ask. But if you were to be blindfolded and brought from North Dakota into Manitoba... Aside from the road signs and all the speed limits being in metric, you would still think you were in America and vice versa. If, if you did it the other way and you dropped yourself in North Dakota and you looked around, you would think you were still in Canada. It's exactly the same. People for the most part look the same. We talk the same. We speak the same language. We have the same heritage, mostly all farmland. All our buildings look the same. We drive the same kind of vehicles. We all drive on the same side of the road. If I didn't tell you I was Canadian, would you know? Just first glance? People usually think I'm from Wisconsin. And when Americans come up here, if they don't tell us they're American, if they don't have that Southern twang, if they don't tell us they're American, we just assume they're Canadian. That's how similar we are. So back to the story. This person from Florida, obviously, well, they live a long ways away. You gotta hand them, it's a long ways. Canada's a long way from Florida, okay? What's the school bus doing? Why are you putting your hazards on? Why don't you turn, there they are, there they are. See, now I turn my hazards on and I slow down and I let everybody behind me know that I'm coming to a stop because the bus is gonna be picking up some kids. I'm always very careful when there's kids around. I never want to be in a situation where I have even a close call with a kid almost getting run over or something. One day I want to have kids and I hope that other drivers are just as careful. And he's gonna let me pass. What a nice bus driver. What a nice bus driver. A lot of them wouldn't do this. Let's give them a friendly wave. Everybody, give them a wave. Thank you. And we'll give them the flash hazards. There you go. Flash your lights back at him so that he knows that you're grateful that he did that. He didn't have to do that. But yeah, anyways, that's my story from Southern. <laughs> yes, we have roads. And uh, Canada's a very big country. I don't know Bob from Toronto. I don't. I don't know anyone from Toronto, actually. No one. Toronto is in a completely opposite part of Canada from where I live. So when you look out my camera right now, you're looking
looking at your screen and I'm telling you, to me, this is Canada. This right here. This is where I grew up. This is what I think of when people say Canada. There's people who live in British Columbia, completely different experience. There's people who live in Toronto, completely different experience. There's people who live in Newfoundland, completely different experience and completely different accents. Good luck trying to understand what they're trying to tell you. I love going to visit there, they're very friendly, but they talk so fast, they're like born auctioneers. Great people. Go and visit sometime when they when all this pandemic's over. Great place. Go in the summer though. <laughs> Avoid it at winter. Avoid it in winter. But anyway. They can get moving. They got places to go to and they're they're quicker accelerating than us. Now if a truck comes up in the left lane here beside us, now we're plugging up both lanes and we're both accelerating very slowly. And it's just not very nice to the cars that have places to be, right? You just want to be a little courteous and extend that courtesy. Try to be in the right lane at the stoplights on the highway, especially. In the city, I know it doesn't really matter because it's the city, but on the highways, if there's you get it, you get it. See, we're gonna take off nice and slow here. And all these cars can, you know, get past us and get on their way to wherever they're going. They got places to be. All right, we're at our first dock. Wanna make sure we're straight. Everything looks good. Let's go in and see what they have for us. So when you go in, you always got to make sure you got your mask on. You've got to properly cover the nose, mouth, and chin. I always bring my gloves along just in case they need me to help out with anything or if I need to move the pallets around in my trailer with a pallet jack. And I'm always prepared. And I always bring my phone with me too, just in case I need to make a phone call. <clears throat> I was talking too much on the way in. I was too excited, too wired on my coffee. I can feel it now. Josh, you've been talking too much and it's not even, what's the time? Not even 9.30 in the morning yet. My body's like, why are you talking so much? Stop it. Okay, so I picked up two skids here. Uh, they're going across town somewhere. Let's get the 
Let's start, let's get out of the dock so that it's open for others. Let's figure out where we're going with this. Most times I can just Google the where it's going. Google has most of the answers. Uh, well, there's a lot of them here. Oh, there it is. All the way back in Steinbeck. What? Okay. What's next? Ha ha ha! That's funny. Anybody want some peanuts? <laughs> I like it when companies come up with clever slogans that make you laugh. Makes you want to buy their product, right? Now I sort of want to go out and buy some peanuts. <laughs> uh, so we got to go right through the city right now. You headed over to the east side now. I'm gonna bring these skids straight there, and then see what they have for us from there. I'll probably be buzzing around the city today, but have I mentioned yet? Today is Friday. More and more, this is becoming a, a highlight of my week. Sort of like there's hump day where you're excited that you're over the hump. What, what is that guy doing? He's angry. You see that? He was making sure that ground was solid. Gotcha. What was I talking about now? Yeah, hump day. Wednesday. Halfway towards the weekend, right? And Friday is obviously Friday. So what do you guys have planned for this weekend? What's your big plans? I think we're probably gonna go out to our spot, let the dogs run around because they've been cooped up inside because of the extreme cold weather. They haven't had a lot of chance to go out and uh, exercise. So this weekend we're probably gonna spend a good, good amount of time out there letting them run around. Maybe have another bonfire. We shall see. I really want to get around this guy. He keeps speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down. He's probably looking for an address or something and doesn't know where he's going. What I've found, driving in the city here, my experience delivering Pepsi back in the past really comes into play here. I know where all the truck routes are and I know how to get through the city. I know where the low bridges are definitely comes in very handy and gets me from point A to point B a lot faster knowing where I'm going already not having to sit there and figure out what's a truck route and what's not I'm not sure how it is in the city you live in or cities you drive through but a GPS for a truck driver in Winnipeg is absolutely useless there's no point it doesn't know where the truck routes are it'll always route you through the most tight streets where you can't get into, and it won't warn you. Even the truck GPSs, if you use those to get into Winnipeg, useless. The only way you can really learn how to get through the city properly, efficiently, and quickly is by experience. That's the only thing that's gonna help you out. And I'm sure a lot of cities are like that, but I did notice that when I was in the US, because most GPS manufacturers and people who uh, build these GPS systems, right, and Google Maps and everything, they're all Americans. They're all built for Americans and they just, you know, throw in the rest of us just to include us so that we don't feel left out, right? So when I'm driving around in the US, the GPS works great there for the most part. The truck GPS will route you around low bridges most of the time. A lot of, the, not all the time, but then you come up to Canada, especially around Montreal where everything's in French. No idea, you can tell that the GPS was designed by a foreigner who's never been here. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. See, the train is way up there, but these lights here won't turn green. Otherwise, you know, people will plug up this whole intersection and then block it for the people going that way, right? So they just leave us here at the light. So if you wanted to make a left turn, too bad. You gotta wait till the train over there is gone. We are going straight, so we gotta wait anyway. Doesn't matter. Train's gone. We're free. Didn't take too long. Sometimes they take forever when you catch a train in the city. And you know that they're, they're slowly going through the city or they're going into the train yards, whatever they do, and sometimes they slow right down. Sometimes they stop. Sometimes they reverse. And you're 
stuck sitting there forever. Like, look at this big lineup on this side. Yikes. Trains are a big convenience. That's why most modern cities build overpasses and underpasses. You know, but that's fancy. That's way too fancy for Winnipeg, so we don't have those. a water main over there. Winnipeg is well known, at least around here I think, to have water main breaks in the winter time. Because the water systems aren't designed for the cold temperatures, I think. I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. Because they keep, whenever it gets really cold, like we had a really cold week this week, the, the pipes seem to freeze and then burst. And then you get a mess like this where they gotta close down a busy road to fix it. I'm thinking that's what happened. It would make sense seeing as we had such a cold week. Just going through little Chinatown here. Even Winnipeg has a tiny, tiny, well, a tiny Chinatown, a tiny, tiny one, but there is one. Probably not as big as the one in Vancouver, because I mean, I think all of Vancouver is Chinatown. I might be mistaken though. One thing you'll notice if you visit Winnipeg is there's a lot of these wall murals everywhere. This one's a little old already, but on the right there it shows what Winnipeg looks like in the current day. And ahead of us here, this is the first settlement along uh, Upper Fort Gary, I believe. Henry Avenue, then turn left onto Laura Street. Sort of shows the history of the area and how it's changed. Find them all over Winnipeg. Let's see if I can back around, back around the corner here, so I can get into the dock I'm supposed to be in. Didn't realize I was facing the wrong way until it was too late. Thing it's not a very busy street. Wow, what's going on here? Yikes, that looks intense. Sitting and waiting. So even these city trucks, they need to do regens as well. 
pretty much what that means is too much dirt has accumulated in the filter. I think it's the DPF filter and the exhaust and uh, it needs to be cleaned out every now and then. This is the second time in two weeks. I think this is, well, it's Friday today, so two weeks ago, almost exactly, we did a regen on this then. And I'm wondering, maybe it's because there's so much local city driving that there's more soot being built up. I don't know if that's normal to have to do a part regen once every two weeks, that'd be twice a month. Seems like quite a bit. But nonetheless, here we are. Wait for it to finish. It should take, it said, anywhere between 20 to 40 minutes. Well, we didn't get very far. We ran this thing through three cycles of a parked regen or a forced regen, whatever you want to call it. And uh, all three attempts were uh, failures because the light is still flashing. And that means that an urgent parked regen is needed. It's going to start derating the engine, I believe. Uh, it feels like I've already lost a little bit of power. Maybe it's just in my mind. Check engine light came on as well. So the shop back home uh, said, don't take it any further. So we're parked here on the north side of Winnipeg at uh, Maxim Truck. Our shop mechanic is driving all the way out here. He's got his scanner that he can plug in here, find out exactly what's going on, why this thing is acting up, hopefully get it fixed right here. And then I can take it home then. I have another driver that's coming to take the stuff that I have in my trailer and put it in his truck and he'll deliver it for me. And uh, this is probably going to be the rest of my day, I'm thinking, depends how quickly our mechanic can fix it. He is pretty good at what he does. I was just talking about him just before. Like he, He's very quick to fix things. And this thing, like I said, two weeks ago, the same thing happened. And he had it fixed before I even got to work the next day. So he probably knows what to look for already, but he wants to come out here and be sure. Uh, because with these trucks, any repairs get very expensive very quickly believe me i owned my own truck for several years and or at least the truck and i was responsible for all of the maintenance and if you don't fix things when they're small they turn into massive things very quickly so we don't want that we don't want a small thing to turn into a big thing uh, so i've been instructed to sit here and twiddle my thumbs and wait the mechanic is about an hour away, at least. So, uh, well, I guess between now and then, the other driver's gonna show up here, and that'll probably take up a lot of the time while we shift freight over. It's a little bit of awkward freight. They're really long pieces. They're heavy, but they're narrow. We gotta sort of lug them into his truck. He's gonna back up to the back of my truck. Oh, uh, that'll probably take a good 15 minutes at least, and then the rest of the time, I guess I'll just babysit the old grumpy girl. I don't know why she's so grumpy at me. It's Friday. She's supposed to be in a good mood. It is what it is. But at least we're getting it uh, looked at now before anything bigger happens. Because I would, I would hate to see the uh, the truck, you know, get thrown into the shop for something big again. They, they just did, a, I believe, a top-end rebuild on this truck. I think that that's what it was. And the owner is a really great guy. And I, I don't want him to have to pay for a massive re repair bill. I know how big they get. You remember that weekend we had in uh, in uh, BC around New Year's, right? Wasn't just after New Year's, 2020. I think, yeah, that was just before this whole pandemic thing started. They were still sort of talking about it, but it wasn't here yet, right? It wasn't a big deal yet. We had we still hadn't heard of masks, wearing masks at that time yet. Now look at us. A year later, I got mine here. And I got an extra one in here just in case. And if those both go, I got a box of disposables just in case. Oh, here's my guy. I'm going to throw the stuff in the back of his truck. All right, all right. Okay. Came to save the day. He's behind me over there. Backed right up to me like a boss. And now all of the stuff that was mine is now his. He will deliver it to its rightful place. And I wait here for the mechanic. And total my thumbs. Boss's orders. He didn't actually say twiddle my thumbs, but he did just say sit tight. Getting tired of twiddling my thumbs. I'm getting a little sore. <laughs> I guess I could stroke my beard like a wise man for a while.
I need to shave this thing. Should I let it grow again? I don't know, I'm not really big into my big beard. Cause look, you can already see how it grows this way. It's like swoosh this way. That's why I never grow it out anymore. Cause it doesn't grow straight. It's very hard to maintain, but maybe now because I'm home every day, maybe it would be easier to maintain. I don't know. Our mechanic guy came and saved the day. Really nice guy. I got to sit and chat with him for a while while he was working on the truck. He's following me now to make sure that everything goes well, that I can get back to the shop. And uh, he'll take a much closer look at the truck in the warm shop uh, back home. So that's where we're headed now. I guess that'll be it for this week. That's it. Go home for the weekend and uh, hopefully get this thing back in tip-top shape Monday morning. Or maybe over the weekend. I don't know when he's going to look at it. Probably Monday morning, I'm guessing. That is what it is. He'll get her all fixed up. Probably won't take him long once he's there. He's got all his tools and equipment there. And, uh, for now, we did what we could so that we can get it back there. And there we go, guys. Today's vlog was very long. I got a little bit yappy today. I, uh, no, I don't apologize. I was gonna apologize. I don't apologize. I regret nothing. I'll just keep this end clip kind of short. So I hope that uh, how I explain things makes sense to you guys. And uh, I keep getting comments about why I don't show my truck. I hope that that makes sense to you now as well. I have an agreement in place and I want to honor that and make sure that I can continue to make videos for you guys here as well as drive the truck uh, daily because there's nothing I love more than driving trucks. Well, I shouldn't say there's nothing I love more there. I mean, I love my family more, but that's why we're doing this, being home every night and on the weekends, right? But I really do enjoy where I'm at. I honestly think that it's a great position and I hope to be there for a very long time. So I'm gonna follow all the guidelines that we have set up and we'll see what happens in the future. Other than that, the truck got back to the shop all right. The mechanic followed me all the way back. He's gonna take a look at it either over the weekend or Monday and hopefully, uh, It'll be a quick fix. I don't, I'm pretty sure it's all just codes. He has all his equipment that you can just plug into the truck and shows you everything. Uh, we were trying to do another regen there, but since the temperatures are so cold, he was saying something about uh, uh, that he couldn't get the exhaust temperature up to where it needed to be to do a proper regen. I'm not a mechanic, so I'm not going to say anything because he was talking mechanic talk. But it made sense the way he explained it to me anyway, so it should be okay. It probably just needs to be warmed up and I'll be able to fix it in the shop. It'll all be good. So thanks for watching today, everybody. Tomorrow is going to be another video. It's the weekend. I hope you're having a great weekend. I'm just putting this together here on Saturday. It's 3.30 p.m. Central Time here in North America. By the time you watch this, it'll probably be the evening already. Take care. And I wish you all the best. See you tomorrow.